Because I get a lot of questions about scanning for pre-market gaps or your pre-market watch list. And I have to be honest with you, they're legitimate questions, they're good questions. And how you prepare for the day before the day starts is one of the most important parts of trading, okay? You see, if you're unprepared at 9.30, you're probably not going to have a good trading day. So for me, my trading day starts between 8.30 and 8.45 each morning. That's when I kind of get in front of my desk, organize my stuff, and then I open up my trading platform. Uh, and what I do is I go right to the dollar gainers and dollar losers. So what you're seeing right now is the dollar losers list on TradeStation. And I can go right here and I can bring it up to dollar gainers right here, click. And now all I have right here are the gainers list. And when I click on something, um, for example, if I click on Netties right here, it'll populate these charts. And you'll notice I have a 60 minute chart and a daily chart. And then of course, I have a weekly down here uh, and then a 10 minute over here. So if I ever wanna see, you know, maybe what the market's doing, I'll just type in spy, all right? And it populates that. So what I can see, for example, this morning is that the S&P 500 is gapping down 0.87%. Uh, which is three dollars and 44 cents to 393.50 um, so 393.50 puts us right about here well if you look at that okay we don't really have anything below us until about 386. so that means i should go into today with a bearish market bias if i go to the qqq it's much of the same. In fact, they're almost indistinguishable. So we've had a three days in a row up in the markets. Now we're down at 276 on the Qs, down 1.1%. 276 is right about there. So we have a little bit of work to do, just a little bit. But if we get under 275, the Qs should retest 270. So while I will put some long ideas on my list, and I absolutely will scan for some long ideas, okay, my focal point today is going to be more on the short side. And you can see that because I've actually already formed my watch list. You can see I only have three long ideas today and I have about eight short ideas and I probably could have added some more. So what I want to show you guys, I'm going to go to the, uh, the losers list. Okay. And I want to show you a couple things about how I scan. All right. One of the first things I do is filter by volume. So if I see a stock that has less than 5,000 shares, I will not touch it right here. For example, BLK right there, 2,800. I'm not going to look at it. CACC, nine, I'm not going to look at it. Um, right here, LRCX, not going to look at it. TMO, not going to look at it. DPZ, not going to look at it because they have too few shares for me. Now, it doesn't, ma it doesn't mean that some of those trades won't go higher or won't go lower or they won't work. They're just too thin for me right now. Okay, the other thing is if there's an ADR or an ETF, an ETF would be like the QQQ or the SPY, okay, something like that. I generally don't put them on my list. Uh, if there's a known ADR on here, uh, like I think SBNY is an ADR, uh, I could be wrong on that. Um, anyway, I won't trade that. So I can skip, I would say 50 to 60% of this list between volume criteria ADR criteria, which are foreign stocks domiciled in America, like say Sony or Toyota, okay, and ETFs. Those three things will dwindle this list of 100 ideas, probably down to 30 or 40, and then I'll go click on those. For example, I'll click on Tesla. Well, Tesla's at 116.00. You can see it right here on the 10 minute chart. You can see right here's a pivot, right here's a pivot. Tesla needs to get under 115. If Tesla gets under 115, Tesla's going back down to 105. So you'll note Tesla is the first stock I have on my long list. Look at the volume it's doing. Look at the interest that it has. So right here on the 10 minute, this is a pre-market chart, pre-market chart, okay? And over here is a 60 minute and over here is a daily. That's what I mainly want to focus on when I'm scanning for my gap list. So I draw my support line. My support line's at 115. I'm thinking, well, Tesla's close enough to 115. It needs to be put on my watch list. Okay, so Tesla is definitely on a list. Then I'm gonna keep going down this list, going click and click and click. I'll click on Goldman Sachs, for example. 365, this one could be on here. I just wish it was doing a little bit more volume and a little bit of a bigger gap. But again, if you have a little extra space, you could put it on there. MA, I was going to put on my list, but this 348,000 shares basically happened right after the market closed yesterday. So realistically, it hasn't done that much volume this morning. So I keep going down my list, going down, going down, kind of look at Netflix, hmm, 326, that's okay, right? You're right there, 
But this stock also has a pivot right at 322. It doesn't give me a lot of room to trade it. So I'm probably not gonna put that on my list. So ultimately I ended up putting JPM on my list because JPM is gapping down to 136 and 136 clears this 138 pivot and it clears this 137 pivot. So over here at 136, it gives me room from 136 down to 134. And you're like, that's not much room. It's not, but if I get a 50 cent stop loss, I'm only gonna need a dollar from this thing. So I, I like that, all right? And you're looking at a stock that does an average trading range of what? A dollar fifty a day, right? So when you look at it that way, you're like, wow, $2 worth of room on JP Morgan is actually a reasonable amount of room on this thing from 136 to 134. The volume on it's over 10 million shares a day. The average trading range per day is only about $1.50. So I'm gonna put that on. UAL, this is one of my top favorites today. Why? Guys, it's up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days in a row. The last three days are what I would call super wide range bars. And on top of that, what do we have here? A huge volume spike. To me, this looks climactic, parabolic. And yesterday, this thing peaked at 51 and the low is 48.50. Well, we're at 49.50. What are we doing? We are gapping about 80% into this green bar. There is definitely profit taking or short selling going on here right now. Uh, and this stock again, being up seven days in a row, super wide range bars, huge volume. That's ending volume right there. This stock should pull back. But you know what? When you have one like this, what do you wanna do? Check the rest of the sector. So if I'm gonna look at UAL, guess what I'm also gonna do? I'm gonna look at e AAL. Oh my gosh, AAL looks almost the same, maybe even better on AAL, okay? You know what I'm also gonna look at? DAL. Oh my gosh, it looks the same. So for me, I think UAL, DAL, and AAL, in fact, I'm gonna add AAL here, are probably two or three of my favorite ideas today. So now guys, I've gone through that list. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to put up a five minute chart. And usually I do this a little bit later. So this isn't really ready yet. So this is a five minute pre-market chart. I do this around 920, 925. I wanna do it as close to the market open as possible. As close to the market open as possible. And I'm just gonna click through each one of these. Oh wow, EDU looks very nice on this pre-market chart. So over $43 on EDU looks like a nice breakout. So I will put this on my favorites list, okay? When I put it on the favorites list, and what I'm gonna do basically is take these 12 ideas or whatever, however many ideas I have, and I'm gonna dwindle them down to my three or four absolute top watches. They're the ones that I'm gonna be razor focused on, laser focused on when the market opens, okay? It does not mean I'm gonna throw away the rest of the stocks on my list. It just means that these stocks I'm super focused on, okay? So now that I have my list, all right? So now that I have my list, I'm going to take those ideas and I'm gonna put them on two minute thumbnail watches. So I'm simply gonna say, wow, I really like EDU. That's one of my top long watches. That's why it's in green. Over here, Caterpillar, okay? Over here, Baba. Well, down here, I'm gonna put AAL first because it's my favorite idea, okay? And then I'm gonna put DAL second because it's my second favorite idea and so on and so forth. Then Tesla's probably my third favorite idea. So now I put them in order. So when I go over here to look, like, okay, these are my absolute top watches. My eye can go to my number one, number two, number three favorite on the short side, number one, number two, number three favorite on the long side. So I will put all of them on this list and then I am just gonna focus focus and focus, okay? And then I'll do one more thing. And then I'll do one more thing. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this list over here. I'm gonna go copy. I'm gonna go paste, take these out, okay? I'm gonna do the same thing on the short side. I'm gonna go copy right here. I'm gonna go paste right there, okay? And then basically I need to add a little bit of space here because below this, these are just backup ideas. So anyway, I have my top long watches at the top here, my top short watches right here, okay? I'm gonna use this, I'm gonna turn into a pre-market chart. Wow, look at PayPal, PayPal looks really good. That's one of my top watches, okay? But the problem is PayPal on the daily has a bottoming tail at $77. So you can see while the pre-market looks good, the daily over here is tough. So guys, when the market opens, 
I'm going to be staring at my thumbnail watch list on my left hand side and then I'm going to be pulling up charts over here. JP Morgan, what is it doing? And when I want to trade a stock, I'm ready. I already have it in uh, in my order entry box and ready to rock and roll. So a lot of people ask me, hey, Jared, how do you prepare for the market open? That's pretty much exactly how I do it. Um, and it's all about focus, knowing what your market bias is, knowing what you want to trade that day and staying focused on it. We're not Elmer Fudd just shooting around with a gun. We're, you have to treat this like a business, man. Laser, laser focus. You're, my job is to come in today and find two or three good trades, two or three good winners and walk away in an hour. That's it. I have other stuff to do, man. I don't want to be in front of my desk for 12 hours, eight hours. I don't know about you guys, but I don't. I want to come in, make two, three, four thousand dollars, maybe five thousand dollars, walk away. Walk away. Okay? So I hope you guys learn a little bit about my pre-market routine and the things that I do to prepare for the market open. I'm Jared Wesley of Live Traders. We'll get back at it again next week. Mm -hmm.